to a masterpiece. It comes all the way from Italy. It's for your new art gallery. It's a Leonardo da Vinci. Oh. Antonio, you are so kind. The beautiful painting will help me succeed. How did you even get such a valuable painting? Oh, I have connections. You know, I would do anything for my closest friend. Muhaha! <laughs> the painting is fake. When Blake puts it in his gallery, he will not succeed. I finally have my revenge, because he married my love. So how exactly can we use chemistry to find out whether a painting's real or fake? A first step is to look at the chemical composition of the pigment. A pigment is the same thing as the paint. So, older paints, most likely in older paintings, were more commonly made naturally, so maybe by grinding minerals or by plant matter. But in more modern times, pigments are made synthetically in labs. So under a chemical test, you can look at these pigments and find out how they react and therefore determine whether they're old or new. This could help you place a painting in question in history. So if you thought your painting was from 1600, but there's paint on it that wasn't invented till 1900, that's a clue that you might have a forgery. Here's something you can try at home. You can make verdigris, a real pigment. The process we're going to use is similar to the process used in the Middle Ages. So verdigris is formed by copper metal reacting under the presence of acetic acid, which is present in vinegar. When the copper oxidizes, copper acetate is formed, which appears as blue-green crystals on the copper metal. So I'm going to show you how this works. All you need is a piece of copper metal, a glass jar, and some pure white vinegar. So just place the copper metal into your jar and pour in some vinegar. Maybe make it so the vinegar covers the copper maybe about a quarter or a third of the way. So you're going to put this away on the shelf for about a week and you'll end up with something that looks like this. Notice that the green is only on the part of the copper above the vinegar. That is because the copper needs to oxidize, so it has to be present to the oxygen as well as the fumes from the vinegar. Hey Steven, look, Antonio's found me a Da Vinci painting for my gallery. How can you be so trusting? Antonio hates you and is a liar. Don't you remember how angry he was after you married Patricia? How dare you say that? You're the one who can't be trusted. I have a hunch that there's something wrong with this painting. Antonio is trying to ruin Blake. I will help him by having the painting tested in a lab. So I'm just going to have some samples from this painting sent off to the lab to be tested so I can analyze them, try to figure out whether this painting is a fake or real. First, the FTIR test, which stands for Fourier Transform Infrared Technology. So what this test does is it shoots an x-ray beam through a diamond at your pigment substance. Just like that. So what happens then is the x-ray forces the bonds in the pigment to vibrate and different bonds vibrate at different frequencies. Think of a bond like a spring. A really tight spring will vibrate more slowly than a really loose spring. So you can determine the different bonds in the sample by measuring how fast they're vibrating. The FTIR machine does not detect single elements though. It will detect the compound type based on the strength of the bonds. So for pigment's sake, it will tell you if it's protein-based, or mineral-based, or oil-based. So that would be a good first step in determining what type of pigment you have in a painting. So the last test we're going to do is the X-ray refraction machine. So this machine sends an X-ray at a sample of the pigment. So what happens when an X-ray is sent at an element is it forces one of the lower energy level electrons to be bumped off. When that happens, a higher level electron moves down an energy level. 
When that happens, a specific amount of energy is released. We can measure that energy and correspond it to an exact element. Using that number, you can then determine what exact elements are present in the pigment sample. So I have the results back from the lab. First, let's look at the FTIR results. This is the spectrum we get from the FTIR machine. The red line at the top of the spectrum is from the paint sample. The two lines underneath are samples from the database. Um, these two samples are for iron groups and oil-based groups in particular. So how we determine the exact type of paint is by looking through our databases to find spectral lines that match up with the samples line. See how the curves fit nicely? This shows that those components are in the paint sample. These particular characteristics lead me to believe this is a metallic based paint. And now the x-ray refraction test results to find specific elements. Here. There are two lines here because of the two different parts of the pigment. We saw this in the last result. There was a metallic group and an oil group. Recall the x-ray refraction test measures the amount of energy released when the electron of a particular element is bumped down an energy level. This is called the photon energy and is plotted on the x-axis. The amount of said element in the sample is plotted on the y-axis. From the database, we have the photon energies of many different elements. So by looking at the spectrum, I can see that there are very high levels of zinc and small amounts of iron and barium. From all these tests, I have come up with a conclusion. The pigment sample is most definitely Prussian blue, a synthetic pigment not invented until 1900. From this, I do think that the painting is a forgery. Blake, I have bad news. The painting Antonio gave you is a forgery. I told you he was tricking you. But why? Antonio and I have been friends since childhood. I'm afraid it's true. It must be because you married Patricia. No! Antonio! How could you do this to me, Antonio? You know I wanted an art gallery since I was a boy! It wasn't me! It wasn't me! The person who gave you that painting, it wasn't me! It was my evil twin, Marconi. He's the one who gave you that painting, and he's the one who loved Patricia and wanted revenge.